Taylor, welcome back to Larry's Anything Goes. Hope you guys are having a great and exceptional day. Uh, there we go. Do the great three free things, like, share, and subscribe. That's all I truly ask. Thank you for the um, most amount of orders I've had this week. So I've had six orders within the last uh, two days. So thank you for those out there that have supported Larry's Anything Goes online um, store. Thank you to my friends that I grew up with. Um, thank you to my family members that have um, purchased who were my actual first customers. You know, a lot of times you got to give gratitude uh, for people that support you because they don't have to shop with you. There's so many places for a person to shop with and they don't have to shop with you. So the fact that you chose to shop with Larry's Anything Goes LLC, it's greatly appreciated. That's why I always send up follow up emails and, and um, thank you cards um, going old school sometimes just to say thank you. Not to, you know, ask for more business if I get more cool. But when somebody spends money with you, that shows you a lot. You know, a lot of people will talk a lot of nonsense. A lot of people will do um certain things and whatnot but when somebody actually puts some money on the freaking table that's why i always respect damon dash he's like he's like when you put your money up then you can talk all the trash you want to and he learned that early in life and i truly 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 respect that because that means a lot now a lot of course things people can do great things for you without spending money and whatnot but when people see that you're out here grinding when people see that you have goals and aspirations and um when they even do the free things by liking a video, by sharing a video, by subscribing to a video, by sending your video to other people and saying, hey, just subscribe to this person. You don't even have to listen to them just to help them with their numbers and whatnot. That's another that's another form of currency and whatnot. But a lot of times people, you know, we live in such a me generation. A lot of times people just think about themselves and never anyone else. So that's why I say I always greatly appreciate you people that do those things you know because i do my best to help out people that i consider there's only a handful of people i can even consider friends anymore so i'll do whatever i can cut off my right left hand and whatnot to help other people out so when people do those great things for me i gotta put it out there to the world you know i know this doesn't this won't this won't touch the algorithm this is not sexy you know positive content you know because most of the shock value content that's what gets the likes that's what gets the attention and whatnot because people like drama that's why stupid reality TV shows and soap operas still exist to this day. Yes, I said it to the soap operas, to the telenovelas. Yes, I said it. Anyways, today's word of the day is occurrence. Stands for an incident or event. Uh, the fact of frequency of something happening. The fact of something existing or being found in a place or under a particular set of conditions or whatnot. We are in an occurrence right now where, and I'm about to write, up, write my poem today called R.I.P. to the Cash Poor Generation. Because everything is repetition, everything is a movement. The way you, um, the way you make love, the way you love someone, the way you um, live in a in a specific area, the way you go to work, the way you operate a business, the way you take care of your children, the way you, you your diet is from what you drink, what you eat, all these things, the way you dress, everything for the most part is an occurrence. Most people don't realize that. I always say the the main thing, like the best thing about being in business, and um, being a business and having a family and um, going to the gym is that for the most part, it's a repetition. You know, you get up, you make sure you're fed, the kids are fed, dress, get them off to school or wherever they're going. You get up, you go to the gym, you do your specific workout and whatnot, you have your routine. Sometimes you might di differentiate outside of the routine depending on the on circumstances. Like even with, you know, children, you know, stuff happens, they get sick, they might hurt themselves or they might have a specific event going on at school you know, parent-teacher conference, you know, so things, you know, not always, always the same, but for the most part, up to 80% of the time, there's an actual occurrence happening, okay, and the same thing, like, great example, with my gym today, so yesterday, today, and tomorrow, uh, my gym, in the, um, I had to basically do something different in regards to cardio, because all of the uh, treadmills have been moved, because they're replacing the hardwood floor, you know, and stuff happens. You live in a place, whether you own the place or you rent a place, eventually a maintenance person is going to have to come in there and fix something or upgrade something because that's just the way, you know, life goes. People upgrade their phones before they even upgrade their life. But that's another story for another day. I don't get that. I'd rather upgrade my life before I upgrade my phone because that's what, you know, my phone is important to me, but it's, my life is way more important to me than my cell phone. So I'll leave it at that. But anyways... So those are the situations where, you know, you have an occurrence of things, but then obviously sometimes, you know, uh, a knife might get thrown into the mix where it slows you down. You know, your car breaks down, you flat tire, new battery, new transmission, new engine, or just new car. You know, like these things happen. Life happens, you know, but you got to be ready. And um, like, you know, where the economy is at now, the people who are 
not cash poor and who have um, access to capital and credit, those are the people that are going to be better off than the people that were living paycheck to paycheck, not having significant amount of savings, not having uh, access to capital and credit and things of that nature, or even other assets. So if they are in a pinch, they could sell off. Like certain times people will sell off certain amount of stocks because they're in a pinch. They might have something happen to the car or they might have something happen to their house and whatnot. But it's like, oh, I don't have any specific cash in the bank, but I could sell this investment and put it into this and I'll be good, you know, well off and whatnot. So, you know, that and that's the thing that matters. Like even like more so now, it's more important to be more, you know, cash heavy and not asset as, as asset heavy. But even if you are as asset heavy um, and cash poor, you can still sell out those assets. Now, you might have some tax implications later. That's why you consult the CPA. I'm not telling you what to do, but these are options that you can look into and talk to the financial professionals, which are not me. But these are things that I've done in my lifetime because it works for me. Sometimes, okay, I have the cash, but I don't want to spend the cash, so I'm just going to sell the asset. That asset's not even really performing for me anyways. So either I can roll it over into another, sell it, and buy another stock or, or a cryptocurrency, or I can use it for the emergency that might happen. These are things that matter. A lot of times people don't want to have that grown up a conversation because they want to get their emotions involved and whatnot. But I digress. Like I said, I can go on and on and on about this. Might go live today, might not go live. Um, Juneteenth is coming up, so I think I might do a live session on Juneteenth just to celebrate and get my perspective on it and go from there. All right, uh, especially now that it's more mainstream. Uh, but anyways, um, so today's quote of the day is by... Um, is it um it's uh virginity uh rametti said i've learned always to take things i things i'd never done before growth and comfort do not coexist growth and comfort do not coexist now virginia rametti was a former chairman and president and ceo of ibm all right i've learned to always take on things i've never done before growth and comfort do not coexist and that is the freaking guys on the truth. Growth and comfort do not coexist. Um, it's easier for even some, it's easier for you. That's why this whole, you know, it's easier for one to be able to leave their, to stay in their hometown because it's all they know. Um, and a lot of times you can grow within your town, but a lot of times you can't grow to your full potential. Um, the expect the, the, the expectations or the, um, the option of one being able to grow to their full potential doesn't a lot of times happen in their hometown in one's hometown. Um, and I can say that, yeah, I'm from the DMV area and I know that I feel my growth and potential grows exponentially more when I leave the DMV area because I don't have the mindset of the DMV area uh, people and the stuff I want to do has nothing to do with the DMV. So that's why that's why traveling is very good for me. Other people, not so much. And that's cool. Whatever. Do what you do. But a lot of times not traveling can limit you in your growth and whatnot. Um, you can even look at foreign countries that were some of the poorest countries on the planet. Um, decades ago, China in particular, but they knew they, they had to get out of this um, stagnated mindset of now I'm not advocating the Chinese government or what they do. I'm not advocating. Now. I'm just talking about what happened. I'm talking facts here. They said, OK, look, we're still going to keep the China first mentality. However, we know we need to work with other nations or whatnot, how they do it, whether it's right or wrong. I'm not getting into all that. I'm just getting into the specific the facts of they had to get they were one of the poorest countries on the world. 30 years ago, 30 to 40 years ago. Now they're one of the quote unquote richest countries on the world in the world. They have their issues, I'm not saying that they don't, but because they they finally decide, hey, we got to open the doors. We got to let talent come in and we got to let our talent go out as well. But we got to make sure that our talent comes home, you know, uh, whether it's from the scientists to the doctors to the engineers to the lawyers to the IT professionals, whatever have you, and the business people so that we can have that merry-go-round of economic prosperity. And they're all over the world now. You know, but they make sure they ensure that th that that money and talent comes back home to China. OK, that's just what it is. And even American corporations and, and, and Western corporations period, from all over the world. were like, hey, there's a billion over a billion people here. Here's a market here we could sell to. You know, you got American companies all over China so that you got European countries all over China. There's a market here. Same thing's happening in Africa. OK, hey, there's there's one of the biggest growing population of people on the planet is in Africa. All right. Nigeria specifically. I mean, to be specific and whatnot. So, hey, there's another market we can open up to. So that's what it is, is being able to go outside of your comfort zone. One of the saddest things that happens, not saying that these countries are perfect, not at all, but one of the saddest things that happens with certain people in the United States is that they have this small-minded this, this small um, mentality to where 
They just say America and that's it. And a lot of times the world has been in the global economy now for about 30 years plus, you know, and that's not changing anytime soon, no matter who's sitting in the White House, governor's house and the mayor's house. I don't care what speech a politician gives you. That's not changing because uh, politicians and business people have business affairs overseas. All right. The world is, glo is a global economy, whether you want to believe it or not. It ain't, we're not, America and Europe is not going back to the heyday of the 50s and 60s um, and 70s and whatnot, where it was a booming, bustling factory is all over the place. You know, that Rust Belt mentality, that's not happening. All right. We, most people get that now, you know, whether what you want, it is what it is. You can want to argue that all day. You can't argue. I don't argue facts. I just discuss them and accept them whether I like them or not. It's like Neil deGrasse Tyson stated, science is real whether you want to believe it or not. <laughs> you can't argue the, the scientific facts and whatnot because it's empirical evidence that's smacking you in your face. You know what I mean? But anyways, all I have to say is um, do your best to be as disciplined as possible whatever you do in this life outside of the norm. It's normal to um, go to work. It's normal to pay bills. It's normal to do all, you know, take care of your family. Normal stuff. You're not supposed to be credit for doing normal things. Um, but be disciplined in areas outside of that so that you can be as, as prosperous as possible. That's all I can say, all right? Well, on that note, do the great three free things, like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day. And as I always say, make money moves or you're going to live broke like a fool. If you're a stock market investor, individual retirement account investor, and crypto investor, think about signing up with Acorn Stash, Crypto.com, Coinbase, all that good stuff. You'll be able to get some money when you sign up, especially with Weeble, up to $700 worth of free stock. And as I always say, make money moves or you're going to live broke like a fool. Take care, family.